you're listening to Fast Facts Perio Edition. And now, here's your host, Katrina Sanders. Hello, and welcome to Fast Facts Perio Edition. I know all of you have been sitting on the edge of your operating chair for the past week because last week we began to talk about the paradigm shift in non-invasive periodontal therapy. We looked at the concept that non-surgical scaling and root planing has now been brought into question. Although we have seen clinical healing associated with non-invasive scaling and root planing, the question really stands to reason. Should we be removing cementum? And ultimately, what is it that we currently understand about the gold standard of scaling and root planing? And so we pick up where we left off this week, coming to a conclusion to better understand how to non-invasively manage periodontitis. The question really becomes, first and foremost, do endotoxins firmly bind into the cementum? And does it require aggressive root planing in order to acquire smoothness? The results of research studies have supported that cementum and diseased soft tissue removal in order to achieve root surface smoothness are actually unnecessary in order to achieve a clinical endpoint. Put simply, we should not be intentionally removing contaminated cementum because it's simply not required for successful periodontal treatment. However, to clarify, calculus removal is absolutely necessary in order to obtain periodontal health because we understand that calculus by its very nature is plaque retentive. What's more, landmark split mouth studies have notated that in Half mouth studies with and without gingival curatage, that gingival curatage alone is also not necessary or required in order to achieve successful healing outcomes. Put simply, as we now look at the management of periodontal wounds in the subgingival space, we are beginning to understand that. Although it is important to have sharp instruments, having sharp instruments so sharp that they remove tooth structure can tear or can damage the cementum, which thus leaves it extremely difficult for our attachment apparatus to be able to provide healing via the long junctional epithelium. As we continue to look at advances in minimally invasive non-surgical therapy, We are beginning to look at the ways in which our eyes and the extensions of our hands are able to effectively examine the root surface. Providers are looking to microscopes or perioendoscope therapy. We're also looking to modalities such as loops, which allow us to transilluminate debris and better identify if there is disease in the subgingival space. These newly minimally invasive principles have allowed us to be able to approach non-surgical periodontal therapy without damaging the root surface and thus improving periodontal debridement through effective calculus removal with less soft and hard tissue trauma. Thank you for joining me for part two of the paradigm shift in non-invasive periodontal therapy. This has been another episode of Fast Facts Perio Edition with Katrina Sanders. Please feel free to reach me on Instagram at the dental wine genist or on my website, www.katrinasanders.com. Cheers.